Hey guys, welcome to Pellets and Pits. Uh, we just got the new Weber Searwood XL600. We put it together. We've got a couple cooks on there. If you guys want to see our review on it, here we go. Bear with us because not only did the temperature drop, it is extremely windy. So we apologize in advance for the audio quality. We're going to try to bust through this. Happy as can be, the new Searwood XL600 by Weber. Let's break into it, get it built, and let's cook on it. All right, before this video even starts, I just want to put it out there. Uh, I did get this grill for free. Uh, some grills we buy, some grills we get for free. Um, it's not my first rodeo, it's not my first grill for free. You guys know me, my opinions doesn't change. I'm not affiliated with Weber, although since Knee Hider Grasshopper, I've loved Weber. Uh, but over the last few years, we've basically created a great relationship with them. They're a great company to work with on my side. Uh, they asked me, hey, we're coming out with a new pellet smoker. I see that you have a new pellet channel. Would you be interested? I said, absolutely, why not? Um, you know, it's not going to change my opinion one way or the other. I just hope you guys look at it, look at the features. I'm not trying to sell you on it. I'm just trying to give you all the options that Weber has to offer in this new grill. Take it with as you will. But as you guys know by now, I stand true to my feelings. I'll give you an honest opinion whether it's free or it's bought. So you guys step back, enjoy the ride, and let's see what it does. We're just getting the pieces broken down, put in place, about ready to put it together, but I was worried if we put it together, I wouldn't be able to showcase this. Um, pretty impressed actually by the build. You can see right here, that's double reinforced. Typically everything we put together is something like this, but with that extra piece of metal, I wanted to show you before I put it together. A lot of strength right there. And I'm sure that has something to do with the fire pot, but this is no thin piece of metal. This is gauge, somehow a thick gauge of metal. I don't have a gauger, but I'm telling you right now, it's heavy duty of sin. This reminds me of 100% quality right here. I mean, this is thick, this is heavy. So it'll be interesting to put it together and see what it feels like. But so far, some of the things I've noticed, very, 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 very heavy duty. So the first step I came to, uh, pretty impressive, the fact that they have actually locked tight on the screws. It's uh, the first grill I've put together that I've noticed that. I haven't put together every grill, but that's pretty neat. Alrighty, she is all put together. Not a bad way to put together. I think the manual said it takes roughly an hour and 15 minutes. I think it took us both an hour and 15 minutes to put together. Nothing shocked us. Um, one thing is important and it keeps reminding you to keep your screws loose when you put it together. That way all the frames can twist and turn all that stuff. And honestly, once everything started rolling, pretty effortlessly. All right, so we're looking at features. All right, we're just starting from the bottom and working our way up. You guys can see that it only has two wheels um at least they are a little bit bigger that's nice got the bottom shelf the bottom shelf says don't overweight it it's rated up to 40 pounds the one thing i noticed while we put it together is it does seem rather heavy for the uh the amount of materials that you would think that's in there um very solid pieces of metal i showed you how the brackets were reinforced the screws had that loctite on there so working down here right here's gonna be your grease trap That's going to be your grease tray, your ashes, and all that stuff. I'm sure you'd have to clean that out regularly. Everything just slides in. One piece upper grate. You have a small, medium, and large grate. I just want to show you the guts real quick because I really think they took the idea of protecting the hot spot. So on most pellet smokers, when you have your burn pot, typically it's extremely hot right there. You guys can see that this is like a diffuser. So it just spreads the heat a little bit more evenly. Plus, I think, we won't know until we get there, you're gonna be able to expand your open grill space. All the pellet smokers I've used in the past have a limited amount of open flame space, obviously, because it's a burn the bar, above the burn pot. But this might make it a little bit larger. We've yet to see. And then you got the heat deflector here as well, which just mirrors this, and it should spread the heat a little bit more evenly. So far, I understand the idea, but without using it, we won't know until we get there. But that just shows you the guts. A little handle to the side, and then on the back side, as you can see, we've got our smart box and our pellet hopper. It's roughly 20 pound pellet hopper. You have your pellet dump right here, and then the pellet dump is right there. And on the back side, built in naturally, we have a shelf hook, which to me, I think is pretty awesome. It's just the little details that I've noticed throughout the build process. 
um, that I've grown to appreciate putting together as many grills as we have and used as many pellet smokers as we have. It's little things like that. The one thing absent on here, obviously, I think would be the lack of shelves. They do offer a shelf that bolts onto the front. It does not come with it. I wish it would come with it because like most people, I think shelves, you just can't have enough shelf space. I, I think it should be standard. I didn't build it. That's my personal opinion. Um, the one thing I do like the aesthetic look of it. I like the heftiness of it. I like the build of it. Everything is going to depend on this little bad boy right here. How smart is it? We won't know until we really start dialing it in. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is really, um, I've already washed everything down with a little, um, little hot water. I'm going to oil it and then we're going to do the burn process. We're about 20 minutes into the seasoning process. Not bad. All right, that storm's moving in, so the quality might drop a little bit. I'm kind of breaking protocol. I've mentioned several times before that I think the open flame technology on pellet smokers is really what I enjoy. It'd be hard for me to have one without it. If you ever ask me, pick a pellet smoker, I'd probably pick the one with a flame option on it just because of versatility. So I have no doubt that it can cook at 250. That's what it's designed for. I'm more interested in the higher temps. So it has a manual mode. We've got it at the 10, which is the highest setting. I've opened a couple times, we're up at 530 degrees. So I'm gonna see how hot not necessarily it gets, but I've just got some chicken breast. All right, one last test. Obviously yesterday we put together, we seasoned it. Uh, we put that chicken on high in the manual mode on 10. Got some fantastic color, some charring, really impressed with that. And uh, so today's gonna be the long haul, right? The long cook uh, pork butt. I'm looking for color and just to see how it operates. Um, so far I've been impressed by how quiet it is. That was on 10. So we'll see what happens when it's on cruising about 250, 275. I put BNB pellets when we started. Uh, today is Bear Mountain pellets. I got cherry. I'm gonna try my best to make it as even as possible so we know how many pellets it runs through in about eight to 12 hours. All right, I was sitting inside, got my notification. Our Weber Searwood is up to temp, and you can see right here, I'm just showing you through the app. We got a probe launched in there. That's what the blue is. And then it shows you the graph coming up and it's gonna show you throughout the cook the temperature swings of your grill. Took roughly 17 minutes from the time I pressed on to the time I came up to temp. All right, so this is the pellet hopper and it's been on the, uh, let's see, eight and a half to nine hours. And you can see right here, I haven't touched the pellets. I haven't worried about the pellets and the pellets are feeding naturally, beautifully. I haven't worried about them one bit, no beeping, no nothing. So the funnel's working great. And it looks like we've only gone through about half of our pellet situation, which is good. So while the excitement with this grill, because it has two features that you can purchase separately that I'm kind of excited about. One more than the other, but you can understand the idea. One is the griddle. I probably won't get the griddle. I know what you're thinking, why not? Because I'm griddled out, right? Like I have a whole nother channel dedicated to that and I might do it for that channel, but since this is Pellets and Pits, but what they do have is, and I'm gonna have to buy it as soon as it's available. 
is a rotisserie. Here's a little things right here. It's gonna somehow fit in that son of a gun and I cannot wait for that. A pellet grill rotisserie, I'm pretty excited about that. That's probably the, between that and the burn pot, like how wide the burn area was gonna be, I was super excited about that. So that goes back to, we mentioned on our pellet grill accessories, why it's important to maybe find, find a three prong system because you're gonna have to plug up your smoker. Well, if you have a rotisserie, now you can plug it right in there. So I'm super excited about it. We're gonna have to do a dedicated video I've already brainstormed. I even thought like maybe like a piece of like a beef over potatoes or ch I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do, but I am super excited about the rotisserie. All righty. So like I mentioned, so we've done the burn in, we've done the one through 10, which is a manual operation to really get this thing hot. That's how you sear on it. The sear wood. And we've done the long cook. We've done about 10 hours on it, about 250 to 260, somewhere through there. So what I want to show you now is basically, the cleanup. So there's my grease tray. This right here is my ash dump, which is why I'm sure, oh, you'd have this little doohickey right here. And that comes with it. Yep. Just like that, you clean all that junk up. And that's it. I mean, you can clean this off if you want to, but there's no going in there every single time and dumping your ash pot or nothing. I've already opened this up. There's nothing to catch ash or anything. I guess the way the fan blows, it blows the ash out, down the sides, and in the pot it goes. So it uh, looks like it's pretty easy to clean. You don't have to worry about doing it every single time. Just want to give you a quick look on that. All righty, so we got a couple cooks on there. We've seen how the unit operates. Uh, we've done the manual mode. We fill it up with pellets. So there's some things I like about it, some things I don't like about it. I'm just going to go straight to the point of the things I don't like about it because those are the things that irritate me the most. Um, first and foremost, it only comes with one uh, thermometer, probe thermometer, even though it has two ports. Um, it doesn't fit any other thermometer that I have, so if you want an extra thermometer going number two, you're going to have to buy that. If they got two ports, I think they should give you two, two thermometers. And I mentioned earlier the shelf, although the shelf is extra, um, it just seems like when you get up in this price range, some of the stuff should be added in it. If you raise the price of the grill up $25, $30, I don't think anybody's gonna be complaining. So I'm sure there's a price point they have to hit, but it's just like the little things, right? You just work hard to get the money and you just want those little extra features. So those are basically the only two things I don't like. That's being like extremely picky, right? Let's open it up. I thought we're gonna get into a um, like a comparison video between this and the Traeger uh, and a new pellet smoker that's coming for the year. Um, we'll just keep that name out of it for now. And the reason is because I thought this was extremely quiet, actually pleasantly quiet. That's one of the things I like about it because another grill I have, it absolutely drives me nuts as whiny and loud as it is. So uh, positive for that. I really think there's a lot of cool features in here. Uh, like I said, your pellet smoker is only as good as the motherboard, as electronics, as the technology behind this. Um, I did think that I was correct when I thought that the fire pot, since it faced out this way, and this is your fire system, created a hotter zone for a larger area, and that was correct. We showed you on the chicken, and we're able to get sear marks all over the grill. Is this gonna replace a charcoal grill? My wife has asked me already. No, no. It's a different intensity and heat. It's a different intensity of how the flames kiss the meat, but if you're having to choose about options, which is what we'll get into later with multiple uh, pellet smokers set up, that is an option, right? That's what I like to showcase. I love the fact that these manufacturers are coming out with sear options because when you're looking for bang for the buck, I like that. I love the options of a flame kissed, but it does lag behind the fact of like an open flame, like a charcoal or even like a higher end pellet smoker. So other than that, I think it performed well. It seemed like it had extremely even heat all the way across. Um, the one thing that surprised me was the dial does not move. Once you put that thing on 250 and the grill set at 250, once it hits 250, we can show you by the graph, it doesn't come off of it. So I don't know how true that temperature really is unless we have like 20 thermometers in there at all times, which could be kind of like a cool video, but there's no temperature swings. If it's at 250, it stays at 250 and I thought that was unique and different because most of my pellet smokers will at least fluctuate some, 
this did not. If you open the lid, the temperature dropped. If you close the lid, it climbed back up to 250 or 260 and absolutely stayed there. So my overall thoughts with it, um, it's heavy. I think it's well put together. I think they've thought about some of the features that probably most pellet grill owners have had frustration with in the past. Um, it's a pretty unit. Um, I like it. I the mean, little I, hooks on the back are a nice touch. It's just a little feature. I think the pellet dump really dumps pellets out fast. That's one thing I like about it. Sometimes they get clogged up. This thing can absolutely dump the pellets, which in our pellet grill accessory video, I showed you the five gallon bucket and how when you dump it, it's important to have like a wide mouth because how much comes out, you'll need that on this. Just to piggyback on the electronics, the motherboard, how it's ran, I do think it's a quality now of pellets. I think pellets are going to have to pick up their game in the fact of uh, these computers are so smart and they're developing these systems so efficiently that this is double walled insulated. You're not losing much heat. I mean, these things are, are designed to run efficiently. Um, so I think it's more about the flavor like that. Look, we did the chicken breast. You saw the sear marks on those. Fantastic. The pork butt tasted just like a pork butt, right? You get the smoke flavor. And then that uh, sloppy joe that we did or for our first cook, same thing, right? I mean, beautiful mahogany color, everything you want. Super excited about the new uh, Weber Searwood XL600. Um, I'm excited because now I can put it up in comparison to other light models. I still think the Loden Star needs to be separated from the pack, but if you're looking at Pit Boss, Traeger, Weber, Camp Chef, and stuff like that, it's nice to be able to compare them with the features and so on and so forth. And that's what we're gonna be doing down there in the future. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to press the subscribe button, pound the notification button, share it with your friends. Peace.